the channel. Uh, back in the C1, and recently, I don't know if anyone watched the video, but I fitted or I modified using Formula One and World Rally Championship technology, I modified the engine bay to be more solid and secure. Um, positive effects, the engine hasn't fallen out, but negative effects are, as I mentioned at the end of that video, is that the car vibrates a bit more, but positively, as a result of that, that means I can tell what the engine's doing a lot more. And I was driving the car the other day, and it felt to be vibrating more than it's ever vibrated in the past. I mean, it always vibrates a bit, it's a three-cylinder shape box, but it felt to be vibrating more than it ever has done, as though it's got a misfire. So this video, if it's an exciting one, we're gonna be chasing and hopefully repairing a misfire. It's not a bad misfire, but we'll see if we can find it. And the first place to look is probably gonna be around the front of the shifter, underneath that bonnet flap. To lift that up and to remove this hairstyle, pull this off so I can get to these bits, which I've done before in other videos. Um, and if I feel it now, I don't know if you can see it, it's vibrating quite a lot. I mean, like I said, they do anyway, but it is a little bit worse than what they normally are. So, where I'm going to try and diagnose this misfire is, I'm going to try giving a bit of a bullet, disconnecting the coil. As we can see, that's made it even worse. So, I'll do the same for all the coils. The same for number three. And there's nothing that's massively obvious yet. Uh, but what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the coil that makes the least difference when it's unplugged. So the one that's contributing the least to the silver smooth running of this car. So what I'm going to be now is I'm going to hold the revs on a little bit using a patent pended specific 6C1 Toyota Igo Peugeot 107 fast idle tool. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to one plus one at one. I don't know if it's picked up on camera, but if any of these coils are worse than the other ones, or any of these cylinders are misfiring more than the other ones, it is that one, which it's not so much picked up at tick over until I did the fast idle fucky about it thing. Um, now, it won't be enough for me to put a coil on. I mean, I want to put a set of plugs in it because, well, I mean, I put a set of plugs in it recently, but they were second hand. I said recently, probably about six months ago. Um, but I've also got a coil kicking about, so, I might as well put it in while I'm here. Like I say, it's not enough to make me go out and buy a coil, but I've got one, so I will put it on. So I might as well, I'll throw the plugs in and one new coil, that one there, and see if it makes any difference. Um, also, this method for testing the coils, it is a bit of an old fashioned method. On, on some cars, if you do this, it will throw fault cords up and then you know you unplug a coil pack and then they won't start working again until you reset the fault cords on some cars so i'm gonna set these bolts out yes so that's the coil that i'm changing oh, sw swapping out as the answer to youtube in it so I remove this spark plug by fitting the socket 16 mil five eighths and um, an extension 
and a ratchet and turn it in an anti-clockwise direction for a number of turns until, until it comes out. And then we swap the position of the old sparkler plug with the new sparkler plug and then put it in. Now there is, you know, you're supposed to, there is a gap for them. It'll tell you somewhere around here. Use long reach plugs, doesn't tell you the gap. There will be a gap setting, but when you're buying the new plugs, it won't be far enough away from it to actually matter. Unless they've been dropped, which I've seen before. Now we torque this up to designate its pre specified torquing settings. And like I say, I had a spur coil, so I'm going to fit that. And um, tighten that up. So the designated is pre-specified Tarkington settings. And then just do the same for these. I just thought it'd be worth showing the differences between the old and new plugs. So the old ones, it's like I said, I put them about six months ago, but they'd probably done about 40k when I put them in. Um, I got them off a guy called Colin on the on the pages, on the on the bug clubs. Um, but if you look at the old ones that I'm taking out. The tip of them is much smaller. Now they're expensive and fancy iridium ones. These ones are standard ones. So I'm going with, because they're like a quarter of the price, that's why I'm putting them ones in. That's the only reason. So let's put them in there. The moment your new sparklers are fitted and your coils are screwed down on top of them as they should be, then you can plug the coils back in to the correct plugs. Um, white one on my car, I think they are like that. The white one's in the middle and the black ones are the two outers, but they won't really reach the wrong ones anyway. I mean, that one will reach that one, as I showed earlier on, just to test people and see if anyone noticed. Um, but no, they're right on the right ones, that's the way they should be. Um, so let's put it all back together, put the put the her box back on. Being careful not to damage our cold air intake. demonstrated perfectly. Let's see if it runs. Yes! Go! So we have an email. And that is because I've been fucking about unplugging coil packs and plugging them back in. So, it's confused the ECU into not knowing why that has been happening. It probably thinks there's a bad connection or something. So I'm going to plug it in, reset the cord. I'll see what the cord says. It will be relating to the coil. But it is ticking over. Smooth. Uh, not smooth, but smooth. Uh, and if we listen to how it picks up. Rev on, rev on. It says they're picking up well, but it's hard to tell from inside the vehicle. So I'll type from outside. It sounds all right, but we've still got that shitter. So I've got diagnostics to uh, to try on it. So let's uh, see what it actually says. I mean, it, it is just on because I've been unplugging the coil packs. Cylinder 3 misfire. That's surprising. Right, let's uh, delete that shitter. And then, of course, it should be fixed. Yes! And that is pretty much it for this one. Um, it's still vibrating a bit, but it's always going to with that engine mount in it. But it's more in like a, a three-cylinder shitbox manner, um, a non-sexual manner now, rather than like a big horse dildo manner. So, like I said, that's it for this one. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe and all the usual stuff. And uh, see you next time.